15 years ago, residents incorporated Shoreline as a city so they could receive better, even exceptional services for their tax dollar. The city of Shoreline has worked hard to meet residents' expectations since that time, and Shoreline families, neighborhoods, and businesses have much to be proud of. Over the past several years, regional magazines have recognized Shoreline as a great place to live. In 2010, Shoreline received national attention by being included in Money Magazine's well-known annual listing of the top 100 best small cities in America. Looking back, who could have imagined we would have accomplished so much in a short 15 years? Concrete evidence of this is seen in the capital investments that have been made across our city. It's exciting to see these projects before and after the improvements. They have helped to create Shoreline's identity and to create a sense of place. Constructing projects that meet residents' expectations and that align with the community's values are what makes Shoreline a great place to live. Ensuring that every dollar of taxpayers' money is wisely invested has made Shoreline one of the best communities in the Seattle region and in the country. According to the city's latest citizen satisfaction survey, residents express high levels of satisfaction with the capital investments made in Shoreline, as shown in this graph. Soon after incorporation, the community began planning what is and continues to be our most important capital investment, the Aurora Corridor Project. In improving the three miles of Aurora Avenue, the community envisioned a safer and more attractive boulevard, showcasing Shoreline's primary commercial area. Our business has been here since 1964, and when the Aurora Corridor project was announced, we were very excited to see the new highway that would be coming in, the addition of sidewalks. We were just thrilled to know that the community was going to have a brand new look. And it's just really been, I think, a nice boost to the overall business community here in terms of, of the capital growth that we've seen. I'm really a big supporter in improving this area that way. With all large capital projects, the city works hard to leverage relatively limited tax dollars with outside funding. The Aurora Corridor project is a perfect example of this. City money only accounts for about 12% of the total project price tag. Another project designed to improve safety and revitalize one of our commercial districts was the North City Project. Improvements include new sidewalks, landscaping, street lights, benches, signal poles, and underground utilities. The results have transformed the area, attracting new residents, businesses, and even a jazz festival that grows in popularity year after year. Running through the heart of Shoreline is the three-mile paved interurban trail used by pedestrians and bicyclists year-round. Improvements included trailheads, rest stops, interpretive markers for historical and natural features, public art, and directional signs. Shoreline's interurban trail also boasts two iconic landmark bridges over large arterials to keep trail users safely away from major traffic. Similar to the Aurora Corridor project, much of the project costs, 84%, were funded by grants from outside agencies. Although Shoreline is a relatively new city, its infrastructure is not. When the city incorporated in 1995, it inherited neighborhoods without sidewalks and walkways and a deteriorating and poorly designed drainage system that led to flooding spots throughout the city. In the past 15 years, we have made addressing these issues a priority. We have targeted our limited funding to construct priority route sidewalks to connect major destinations such as schools, parks, bus routes, and commercial centers. We have also worked to significantly reduce some of the worst drainage problems in Shoreline, including along 3rd Avenue Northwest at Richmond Beach Road, at Ronald Bog, and at East Boeing Creek. The water in our backyard in the fall of 2003 was about a foot deep, maybe six inches in our basement, flooded everything, ruined everything. We got a lot of water from 175th because of a diversion pipe that was aimed at our homes. We finally went to City Hall and uh, City Council meeting. Jesus came out with uh, Jerry Schuster 
uh, the very next day. Absolutely uh, solved the problem in a few months. The project was taken care of, it was done, and uh, we are dry. We have been dry for six years, absolutely. Preserving open space for future generations is important to our residents. That is why more than 50% of the 2006 park bond levy was used to acquire approximately 28 acres of open space. When we went campaigning for the 2006 parks bond, we asked people what they wanted, and, and one of the things they asked was for us to take care of our existing parks. And so we put a lot of money into improving the parks that we have. And so it's really a tribute to the citizens of Shoreline that we have these improvements and that our park system is as wonderful as it is. Some of the most visible improvements are in our parks. Major park improvements have occurred at the Paramount School, Shoreview, Richmond Beach Saltwater, and Hamlin Parks. A skate park, which is popular with area youth, has also been built at the Paramount School Park. We have also created a new park in Richmond Beach and two off-leash dog areas at Shoreview and Richmond Beach Saltwater Parks. The Spartan Recreation Center, once a barely used Shoreline School District gym, gained new life through a partnership between the city and the district, reopening it as a community recreation center. The facility is now actively used throughout the year by a variety of programs and users. In 2001, the city renovated the Richmond Highlands Recreation Center, which primarily serves our teen program and specialized recreation program. A number of improvements have also been made to Shoreline's different athletic venues. At Shoreline Park Fields A and B and at Twin Ponds Park, we replaced the old sandy fields with synthetic turf, enhancing safety and improving drainage and surface water quality, as well as lowering maintenance costs. Improvements to the city's baseball and softball fields have included installing new backstops, dugouts, scoreboards, and installing or repairing restrooms. To help minimize disruptions to surrounding neighborhoods and to increase efficiencies, we have found ways to combine different capital projects into larger single projects. We have successfully integrated large stormwater detention and water quality treatment areas into park improvement plans. Cromwell Park and Boeing Creek Park are great examples of this. In both instances, we combined efforts in order to reduce construction impacts and costs to taxpayers. Since incorporation, city councils began a tradition of saving for construction of a city hall. Over the years, we saved enough money to purchase the land and to have a significant down payment. Rather than lease the space, it made the most long-term financial sense for taxpayers to own this facility. No new taxes were needed and debt was kept to a minimum since our strong financial standing earned us low interest rates. In addition, this new multi-purpose facility serves as a model of environmental and energy sustainability. The U.S. Green Building Council awarded City Hall a gold lead rating for its sustainable design. The residents of Shoreline incorporated in order to have a local voice in government. They expected enhanced safety, a revitalized park system, improvement of public works infrastructure, and local taxes going to local projects. Today, over 75% of Shoreline residents say it is important to continue making these capital investments. In just a short time, we've accomplished so much as a community. It's exciting to imagine what the future will bring. As we have seen, by investing our local tax dollars right here in Shoreline, we can create a city that is recognized both regionally and nationally as a great place to live.